Hi everyone. I am Vera Masood, a doctoral candidate at the University of Auckland, New Zealand. Today I have the pleasure of presenting a journal first paper titled Real World Scrum, a Grounded Theory of Variation in Practice, which is a joint work with Rashina Huda and Kelly Blinko. Scrum by far is one of the most popular and commonly practiced agile method. Jeff Sutherland and Kent Weber formally introduced Scrum Framework in 1995. Since then, there has been a constant increase in industrial popularity and adoption of Scrum. According to the latest statistics of State of Agile Survey, it was reported that more than 70% of software team of the respondents were using Scrum or hybrids of Scrum. With growing popularity and adoption of Scrum, it is no surprise that many organizations today are seen to modify or adapt Scrum to suit their settings. Several studies have reported variation observed in practice either as their preliminary findings or as secondary findings of their studies. However, details and examples of which specific variation occurred and the potential rationale behind these variations were not investigated in depth. And most importantly, prior work did not consider the classification of variations. This study is guided by a research question of how, when, and why does Scrum practice vary from Scrum by the book? To study this, we collected data from two main sources. We used Scrum Guide and Scrum Primer to understand what is prescribed in Scrum by the book. These are the formative Scrum resources which are commonly acknowledged and referred in research studies. To understand what occurs in practice, we collected data through pre-interview questionnaires, semi-structured interviews, and team observations. 45 participants from India, Pakistan, UK, and New Zealand were interviewed. We shadowed five Scrum teams and observed their Scrum events and practices. In this study, we applied Strauss and Corbin's version of Grounded Theory, which comprises of three data analysis procedures open coding, exil coding, and selective coding. The image here presents how we applied these procedures in the study, but the details of how we applied them can be found in the paper. While looking at how and when does Scrum practice vary from Scrum by the book, we found variation across three main categories. Variations in Scrum roles, variation in Scrum artifacts and variations in Scrum practices. Some examples of variation in Scrum roles include multiple teams sharing a product owner or a Scrum master. We also found that teams were practicing Scrum without any Scrum master. It was also common that a team member was serving as Scrum master on a rotational basis. While Scrum by the book encourages cross-functional team, our result confirms that it is not uncommon that a team of specialists practice Scrum. We also observe variations in Scrum artifacts around who created the product backlog items, who defined the Scrum backlog and the sprint goals. In addition, we observed a wide range of variation in how, when, and by whom project management practices such as estimation, breakdown, and assignment are done. While investigating why does Scrum practice vary from Scrum by the book, we found different rationales and motivations behind these variations. Some variations were based on need, choice, context, while others emerge due to lack of clarity in theory. Team and individual preferences, effective resource utilization, organizational structure, faster completion time are examples of reported rationals behind these variations. 
To make sense of these variations, we present a nuanced scrum variation classification approach, which explains variation in practice as tended variation, necessary variation, contextual variations, and clear deviations. Standard variations are specific variation allowed by book, and they are mentioned as optional implementation pathways. Example is task assignment time. Scrum guide states that work assignment can occur both during sprint planning and as needed throughout sprint. In practice, assignment occurred during sprint planning meeting, daily standups, and on ad hoc basis throughout the sprint. Second example of standard variation is estimation technique. Guide does not prescribe how to estimate, but the primer recommends relative size as a guideline and story points and hours as concrete examples of allowed variations. In practice, we found that estimation was done using story points and hours. And this was allowed by the book. But we also found that teams use t-shirt sizes which is not mentioned as a specific example in primer, but follow the guideline around using a relative size measure. Necessary variations are the variations created in practice to address vagueness or ambiguity in Scrum by the book. An example is Scrum teams adapting the order of the project management practices. Now, both Scrum Guide and Primer refers to breakdown, estimation, and assignment. It is unclear what order they are meant to occur in or whether a particular order is preferred over another. These ambiguity necessitate variations in practice. Some teams estimated items before break breakdown and assignment. Others perform assignment before estimation and breakdown. Another example of necessary variation is of product backlog refinement. Guide states Scrum teams decide how and when refinement is done. In practice, we observe that refinement sessions were done before sprint planning in some cases and during analysis sessions in others. Next, we have contextual variations. These are temporary or infrequent justified variations contradicting Scrum by the book. Guide does not prescribe how many items should be assigned to individual, but Primer clearly states volunteering one task at a time. In practice, we observed that multiple items were selected during sprint planning meeting based on individual expertise, preferences, or specializations. Second example of contextual variation is of work assignment. Both guide and primer explicitly discourages allocation by a manager. In practice, the manager delegates urgent high priority tasks to the most skillful person in the team for a faster delivery as a norm. Last, we have clear deviations. These are ongoing or frequent unjustified variations contradicting Scrum by book with no intention to align with Scrum by the book over time. Primer states team deciding how much work it will complete. In practice, we found product owner deciding how much and what work the team will deliver during the sprint. Online micromanagement is neither supported by Primer or Guide, but we found multiple instances of team lead driven assignment on a regular basis as clear deviations. To conclude, our theory describes variations in Scrum practices, roles, and artifacts, and the underlying rationales. We need to be aware that not all variations are method, abuse, or misuse. Some variations are inevitable and often necessary. Thank you for your time. I look forward to hear your questions and comments during the conference.
Hello, everyone. Welcome to the question and answer session of the paper Real World Scrum, a grounded theory of variations in practice. My name is Silverio Martinez from the Technical University of Catalonia, and I will be chairing this session. Saina Masot from University of Falkland and Rashina Hoda from Monash University has joined this uh, question and answer session. So first of all, I would like to thank them for the great video that we have just uh, watched. And please uh, make your question in, in the chat so that they will be glad to, to answer. Okay, I would like to start with the uh, first uh, question. Uh, as we have seen, several other variations were related to ambiguities in the Scrum Guide and the Scrum Premium. So do you consider that, that some orders in this guide should shall be better specified? And also, uh, are there some variations that you think that shall not occur at all? Uh, that's a good topic, I would say, in terms of first answering the first of it. So, I think there are variations which are not well, at least kind of. Uh, practitioner well, I mean the yes. are the fish are following the not impact uh, yes. you know principle in a so that's if for example uh, you are uh, you are you know you're doing clear deviation for example you are have ongoing management for a very long time Example, you are not a lot of teams to self attend themselves. So that is, and you do it without any vacation for a very long time. So that is a deviation, not aligned uh, by the principle. The, uh, I, I feel the practitioners need to be aware of these variations so that uh, they could address, for example, if they are doing it the wrong and they should improve in the right way. And if they are following something, which is because, uh, uh, which is because of some ambiguity, so that can be done for a long time. So now coming to your question in terms of updating this from So um, like these uh, literature, so these formation guides, they keep on updating. So we know we recently and not recently, an uh, update of Scrum Guide. So, um, keep on addressing Sorry, different one terms. thing. Sorry? Yeah, I see that some people is having some problem with the sound. Uh, I'm hearing you well. Okay, let's, let's go on. Sorry for, uh, for interrupting, because the only thing, thing we could do is refreshing. So, right, yeah, the right. people can't refresh uh, the... Okay. Oh. Yeah, just think with that. So these uh, guys mm -hmm. they keep on getting to meet needs of the practice. So I mean, yeah, there are uh, yeah. areas where they are not fine. It's a good idea to provide clarity. For example, if uh, the of the project practices. So if we have clarity on what is the right thing it or better way of doing it, could help the uh, practitioners. So well, yeah, yeah, it depends. Uh, they try to address it on and off. Uh, so, so yeah, I think it will keep on updating with time. So the idea here is to just uh, be aware of with this, um, your main, you know, principles of Scrum. If you are following that, then but, but if you're deviating or Scrum, then that should be highlighted in. Okay. Okay. So just to, I see many comments, just to remind that there will be a discussion room in five minutes, uh, if anyone wants to join. Okay. We have another question from, uh, by Lutz uh, Preschel from Germany. So he says, uh, the last category of uh, deviations in the, is the interesting one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, is it worth a GT process theory, uh, how shad variations come to be? Are you working on it? Uh, 
is this question from who? Can I just read uh, it to myself? The last category of deviation is interesting. One, yes, that's true. Yeah, because yeah. that's terrible if you're not uh, doing this in the right ways. Is it work of a process theory? How such variations come to be? Betting on it. So, um, so I mean, how this happened was we, uh, when we collected the data, me, I started with investigating of how teams um, scrum. So uh, when we, and and because we had an idea from the that literature is prescribing a way of doing any practice. But when we observed and when we interviewed the parties, we found the variations. We uh, thought about and we came to understanding the different motivations not following, you know, the way uh, prescribed these practices by the book. Sometimes different uh, behind the variations because, because uh, you know, uh, these two not following that. Sometimes it was about organizational structure. Sometimes it was about but better understanding of better uh, resource organization. So, so when we get when we find the variation behind these uh, motivation behind these uh, different practices, we we thought of you know how these could be grouped or categorized, and we found that the clear divisions were the it was sub scrum. So I mean we we are not right right now. I mean we have defined our classification, but our um, the future researchers, they are welcome to use, uh, to validate, extend our classification, even apply that on different contexts and even with different uh, areas, they could, you know, extend our classification. So, yes. I hope that makes okay, sense. Okay, great. Great. Um, so another question uh, could be, how did you perform? So you created a, you have a very nice uh, mixed methods study with uh, survey uh, interviews and team observations. So I am interested in knowing how did you perform these uh, team observations uh, of these five teams you mentioned? It was, so we, we started with uh, one of the teams. So, so what did was I personally, to the company, so I, I used to go for like two weeks when uh, they were following these uh, different scrums. So I heard them while they were doing this. Well, they were doing print planning meeting and the task breakdown and retrospective. So, uh, yeah, so being part of the team, I, though I was um, like a silent server, it helped me to. Kind of, but uh, the interview, so that supplemented our data, which we got interview. So for, for the first team, we did was we interviewed all the participants, which were, uh, which all the team members, which were part of the team. So then what we did, because we found that very uh, useful in the sense, because most of, I mean, all the same questions from all the participants. So that's why with the next uh, team, sir, we just picked one people from the team who we interviewed. Process of observing the team was mostly the same. Both there, I used to for for whole of the day, sometimes for half of the day, and observe them doing the practices. And once they, you know, said they were done with the session, I used to, you know, a few questions which I was confused about. Right. Okay, very good. Uh, sign up. Uh, congratulations uh, for your work. And also, I would like to thank all the audience uh, for the questions. Uh, I also see Rashina is uh, replies or putting some of the uh, sign ups comments on the chat for those with uh, trouble listening. And I would like just uh, to invite people to join the discussion room that I hope the, the audio is better. Okay, thanks a lot and see you in the next talk. Bye.